I have to get something off my chest about inulin, all right? We see inulin in a lot of processed foods and a lot of low carb foods, and we automatically assume that because of that, it's not that good. And yes, we tend to get bloated with it too. So add insult to injury and we're like, okay, this stuff's gotta be bad. But there's some very fine print that we need to understand with inulin because inulin by its very nature is not bad. Okay, in fact, inulin by nature is actually quite good. It's one of the most like fermentable fibers that we could consume. Outside of resistant starch, inulin is going to be one of the best contributors to short chain fatty acids that we possibly know of. Okay, what that means is that just literally consuming inulin in one dose can increase the overall short chain fatty acid content in your gut. Now that in simple human terms means that the end byproduct that we are trying to achieve with fiber in the first place, we can achieve with inulin. But we run into a problem, okay? You see, what happens with inulin is it takes a while to break down, okay? So it comes in, it's a specific kind of fiber, it breaks down and it feeds certain bacteria within our gut, which is a great thing, and it feeds certain bacteria which ultimately produce short chain fatty acids, which are a great thing. But because the chains of inulin are so strong, they're a certain kind of polysaccharide, they take a long time to break down. And they usually tend to draw water in during that process, so we get bloated. Well, when we consume some kind of keto snack or processed food or something, and it has inulin in it, a lot of times it also has inulin alongside some kind of like sugar alcohol. When you take a look at like even erythritol, some of these sugar alcohols that aren't bad, but they still, if you have a lot of it, it's gonna trigger some digestive discomfort. Well, you combine those with inulin and then you run into a serious issue as far as bloating is concerned. Okay, you had a lot of water that's getting drawn in from the sugar alcohol via what's called passive diffusion, where basically water just gets sucked into the colon, but then you also have this digestive breakdown that's occurring at a slower level because of the inulin. So you end up with just a fair amount of bloating that can make you feel very uncomfortable. And yes, okay, that does not go without like some validation. But what we have to take a look at is how much inulin are you consuming and where are you getting it from? Okay, so there's one particular kind of inulin that's in artichokes. It's called very long chain inulin and it is heavily studied. It's probably one of the better contributors to overall short chain fatty acid content of all the foods that are out there. So anything like artichoke or like asparagus or like onions or garlic or leeks, those are all going to have high amounts of inulin. So there's different forms of inulin. The hard part is we just see them added to processed foods, usually extracted from chicory root, which again, it's not the end of the world, it's just overdone as a processing agent, okay? Uh, so like, I eat a ton of asparagus, I eat a ton of artichokes. By the way, if you wanna try, there's a brand called Poshi, and you can get them through Thrive Market. They have these little packets that are super, super good with artichoke, asparagus, and little marinated packets. Anyhow, I digress, but I want you to check out Thrive Market after this video anyway, because they have a bunch of like the high fiber foods that I'm talking about to begin with. With. So there's a link down below. They're an online membership-based grocery store. For things like this, like things that I can keep in my pantry, I use them. So they deliver it right to my doorstep. Super convenient, super easy, saves me a ton of money because I don't have to go to the grocery store. And they're a huge supporter of this channel. So because of that, there's a special link for viewers of my channel, for people that are subscribed to my channel. So use that link down below and you can check out Thrive Market for yourself and you can shop by category. It's just awesome. So check them out after this video. So what's funny is there was a study that was published in the Journal of Metabolism. It took a look at inulin and it gave subjects a single 24 gram serving of inulin and they have after one serving, a huge increase in their short chain fatty acid content. So just to paint a picture for you, when you have fiber, what happens is soluble fiber breaks down and it gets fermented and it feeds these bacteria that are in our gut. And then these bacteria produce short chain fatty acids. Well, these short chain fatty acids send signals to the brain, they fuel the cells, they fuel specific cells within our gut. I, I cannot overindulge you with like how important they are. They are critical to our weight loss, they are critical to our body being able to utilize glucose, being able to metabolize fats. Okay, that's why I always say a diverse microbiome is so good because you have a higher chance of producing short chain fatty acids. So then also looking at inulin, which again, we always think is bad because it's on labels of processed foods, is that there's a study that was published in the British Journal Nutrition. Okay, and this one took a look at giving subjects 10 grams of inulin for three weeks. They found after three weeks, they had like a huge shift in how their microbiome was laid out. They had a huge shift of bad bacteria turning to good 
and a huge reduction in the bad bacteria in general. So they ended up with a better ratio of good to bad bacteria, which is something that, of course, we are after no matter what dietary protocol that we're on. Okay, so again, it's just a factor of looking at what the inulin is in. The inulin itself is not the problem. I don't want you to stay away from foods that have inulin. But the other one that we have to look at is chicory root. Okay, a lot of times people will say, I want inulin instead of chicory root. It's ultimately the same thing, okay? Nine out of 10 inulins that you're gonna find in most foods, processed foods, are derived from chicory root. The only difference with chicory root is they're leaving some of the other substance and sometimes a few of the other components of chicory root as a whole. But if it says inulin, it's likely chicory root anyway, unless they're deriving very long chain inulin from artichoke, which I highly doubt. So at the end of the day, artichoke, asparagus, leeks, onion, garlic. Okay, those are gonna be your main sources that you wanna lean into when it comes down to inulin. Everything else is a little bit just noise, but it's not bad. I'll see you tomorrow.